meeting on the crossroads where the two forbidden subjects of religion and politics intersect. This is the Soapy Shoal Roundtable. I'm Mel McGinnis, and with me is my friend Tim Hagberg. And a lot of time has passed since we've been together, and I think we're going to go north of the border, as well as south of the border, in one session here on the Roundtable. Tim, north of the border, what have you been observing as you watch what's taking place in Canada? Well, interestingly enough, I'm seeing civil disobedience being tra uh, being framed in the context of being insurrection, of being sedition, and these types of things. As far as I know, this is the foundation of our country. Uh, it's constitutionally guaranteed here in America. I don't know uh, about, you know, to peaceably uh, gather and to um, protest, but I don't know about Canada. I don't know if they have a Bill of Rights. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen uh, buildings being burned in Canada. I haven't seen uh, statues being toppled by these truckers. I haven't seen uh, damage to property occurring. Certainly there's some obstructions uh, taking place. I believe Dr. King blocked traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, these types of things, uh, while inconvenient, I don't know that they're destructive. Right, exactly. Very different from BLM, Antifa, and I think Canada had that as well. And it seemed like Prime Minister Trudeau was much more amenable, was much more open to those factions, to those on the left, rather than these truckers who simply want mandates to be removed so that they can operate freely within their own country, and I would say even at our own border. Yeah, and I don't understand. I mean, you talk about people who work alone. Truck drivers are often alone in their own vehicle for long hours at a time. I don't know how that's a, a threat or what, what the... Uh, of course, a lot of this, a lot of these mandates don't seem to make any sense. Uh, my understanding is that to this day, does the United States Postal Service have a waiver on the mandates? I don't know. I've seen uh, my post office there at Frewsburg. They always operate in masks. That is, the people who are behind the desk have masks, so I couldn't tell you for sure on that. But I wonder if the guy who's driving the mail truck has a mask. I well, <laughs> the, you know, they, ha they handle mail, you know. Uh, seems to me there's much more public interaction than the truck driver. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So I feel like the border up north is very much regulated. Well, yeah. So, I mean, now you need a passport, I believe, to go to Canada. Yeah, and uh, the truckers, that's one of their places where they are setting up shop, or I should say, uh, setting up a dis civil disobedience location to try to make their point to the government that they want these mandates to cease and desist. And whether that's uh, at the Ambassador Bridge there in Detroit or uh, another, uh, it would be, was it Alberta, Montana is another point in which it's very difficult to cross the border because the truckers are there. Uh, and they have had to deal with these regulations that have been uh, with them now for at least two years. Is there an outcry of the people to demand that truckers be vaccinated? You know, when we talk about the crossroads of, you know, religion and uh, politics, I mean, your politics are a product of your, your belief system. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very much influenced by the purpose of government, which is to protect uh, the citizenry, to allow them to live their lives, to better themselves, you know, and, and to, uh, to have safety. I mean, that's got to be the number one priority of government, why it's established, uh, is domestic peace mm -hmm. and you know global you know from foreign invasion so how does uh you know where's the outcry of the people for these mandates right and i it think it seems to be the other direction exactly it seems the top down definitely uh, and from those powers that be that want to institute them and here we have truckers that aren't saying they're anti-vax they're not saying we're anti-mask what they want to say is it's a person's choice whether to be masked or vaxxed. 
Right, and I don't know that the evidence is there to um, say that you are a threat to society. Right. An unvaccinated trucker. I don't care who drives yeah. the truck. I mean, that's their business. <laughs> Exactly. So here we see all these regulations occurring north of the border between Canada and the U.S. But when we get to the south of the border, it's a very different Wait, scene. Wait, just stop in between. Oh, stop in it's between. just coming to America. Oh, the truckers. The American truck drivers. Yeah, I mean, I've heard rumblings. Engines you know, could be, uh, and I really applaud these people for taking this stand because it's going to cost them. Mm -hmm. You know that the forces that be are going to destroy many of these individuals. Mm. You know their license plate numbers are getting taken down. Uh, you're probably going to see the revocation of their licenses. Uh, who knows what Canada is going to do? Yeah, we shall see uh, what the cost will they're be. Not play, they're not playing nice. Yeah, and. I feel like there is no um, gesture of reconciliatory language by those persons in power. Like they bring up, uh, we saw a Nazi flag. Yeah, they did. Uh, or we saw a Confederate flag. I mean, that's one, two, maybe three. But they try to make them out to be something that they're not. Oh, sure. I mean, you didn't see uh, January 6th. I was there. Uh, I don't believe any Korean flags were on world news. You know, you, you saw Confederate flags, and there were Confederate flags there, but they were far outnumbered by Korean flags at the Trump rally. And I'm sure none of those made national news. That is interesting to hear. So, from. It's cherry picking. I mean, yeah. it's, it's uh, you know, the great contingency of Asian Americans for Donald Trump at that rally, peaceably assembled. And the reason, I believe, is they understand the threat from China. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah, exactly. And to think that they were doing anything different on the, uh, you know, the, the vast majority of mainstream media for this issue would be any different, would be, there's no reason to think it's any different. Right, right, huh, yeah. And uh, is it okay to go south of the border now? Sure. I mean, I'm looking at the southern border, and I see a border that's out of control. I see a border that's unregulated. I see a border in which our border patrol uh, feels like they're middlemen for sex trafficking and drug trafficking. You want regulation, you racist mouth. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, and that's all you're calling for is order. Yes. Law, law and order. Is that such a radical concept? You know, and God bless these folks. If I was in their condition, I would want to come to America also. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the fault. That is not uh, the fault. But the, the, the way it's being done, the way it's being handled is obviously is an open door to Chinese fentanyl. It's undebatable. You know what's happening. And yet there doesn't seem to be anybody stopping it or anyone who cares. Yeah. Uh, the It's still illegal, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they changed something and I don't know about it. Yeah, I mean, Kamala Harris has certainly dropped the ball when she was put in charge of it. And uh, I see Border Patrol agents demoralized. They can't do their job. And... Yeah. Uh, I feel like they're almost like running a uh, makeshift daycare center for kids that are dropped. And then they're letting the illegals, the cartels, do what they want. This sure seems to be aiding and abetting drug trafficking and human trafficking. Yes. And I don't know why there's not, we discussed this earlier, why there isn't liability there. Mm. You know, if I am aiding and abetting a terrorist, I'm certainly in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, and certainly there are some... Uh, you know, Mel, if I'm wanted for murder in Mexico, I don't want to go to a Mexican prison. The very best thing I can do is cross the border into the United States and then kill somebody. Because then I will do time in an American prison. I will not simply get caught and extradited to Mexico. I will live out my days in the American prison system. And two-thirds of the world's population, is, this is a horrible thing. It's a terrible thought. But two-thirds of the world's population would gladly live out their days 
in the U.S. federal prison system. I mean, I, you're, right, they you got, got the stimulus. Right, you got the three meals, <laughs> yeah. you got the three meals a day. I, yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I, and I also liked what you had to say regarding these vans that are stopped at the border. But then there's a whole nother other means of transportation that simply are being used to promote if the airplane and the redistribution of, of uh, people throughout the United States by airplane is happening in these states, these airplanes should be seized and everyone driving them should be arrested just as a truck driver would be arrested for transporting illegals across the border. Right. We've seen trucks stopped and drivers apprehended. Right. But as we've heard and watched these planes go into airports unloading all these illegals, it seems like they have a pass. And I, what'd you say about, like, Ron DeSantis? Oh, if I was him, I would have the state police stationed at these airports during the night. And I would seize these airplanes. <laughs> I think that's... Your... I would arrest every single person, yep. the pilots, and I would seize the property of the aircraft. Yep. I don't know why you wouldn't. Right, right. And it seems like there's been a whistleblower in an airline company who's come forward and saying even the company is compliant and this is what it takes. Yeah, well, somebody's paying for it. Yeah. You know, they're not doing this. <laughs> you know, they're not doing this out of the goodness of their heart. Right, right. Me. Exactly. The the companies are getting payments for all of this. And so we can see that this has not uh, this has consequences beyond the border itself. It's throughout the whole nation now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't say in every 50 every one of the 50 states, but it is definitely affecting other parts than merely the border at Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. And there again, let me just reiterate that, you know, I have no uh, doubt that, you know, people in certain circumstances uh, want to leave those countries, come to America, uh, but say it should be done in an orderly and law-abiding fashion. And... Uh, to, to, to not do so is, is just, uh, it's a disservice to the American people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I just really appreciate Tim coming and joining. I know it's been a while since we've done one of these. Unless, Tim, you have something else you wanted to add before we wrap up this conversation from the northern border to the southern border. No, nothing in particular today. All right. All well, right. Do I do have some thoughts for some future programs. Though. Oh, like what? I would like to discuss slavery. Oh, okay. And uh, just as a topic. Slavery as a topic. In the Bible, people say, oh, the Bible condones slavery. Well, does it? Does the Constitution condone slavery? Condone? Or does the Constitution today allow for such an arrangement i don't know well we'll talk about that hope i feel like this will be a subject that will be of great interest so come back we'll have tim come back again as we continue our discussions on the sophie shoal roundtable <laughs>